All right, today we're gonna to be going over installing Windows 11 in KVM. So now, in my previous video, I installed Windows 11 in KVM for the purposes of reviewing it. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to do that. Now, installing Windows 11 in a virtual machine is pretty complicated because of the requirement to have a TPM and also for uh, UEFI BIOS. But without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, so now the very first thing you'll need to do is install Virtual Machine Manager, which is a graphical application to manage your virtual machines in KVM. Now, I've already installed it, as you can see here, so I don't need to worry about this, but if you haven't already installed it, you can get it from your distributions package manager. Now, once you've done that, you're gonna head over to this Reddit post, which I'll have linked in the description, and basically, it'll be in the comments. Don't worry about this first comment, I found this not very reliable. I actually use the second comment, which is more reliable. And huge shout out to user SEJ7278 for posting this, and also to GitHub user Stefan Berger for actually making this dependency and posting it to GitHub. Without you, this video would not be possible, and my previous video, which was a Windows 11 review, would not have been possible either. Now, I know this is for Ubuntu 21.10, which, by the way, Impish Indri is the code name for Ubuntu 21.10, but this one works on Ubuntu 20.04, and it should work on Ubuntu 22.04, which is coming out on April 21st. But anyway, you can just go copy and paste these commands, and then that should install a dependency called SWTPM for you, which is what you'll need to emulate a TPM, so that way you can actually install Windows 11, because if you don't do this, the Windows 11 installer won't work. However, what I've done is I've actually basically taken this and put it into a bash script to kind of streamline the process of getting this installed. And I've even added in my own comfort feature here, which basically what these last two commands do is once it's installed SWTPM, it basically deletes all the files that were required to get it installed because those will no longer be needed. So that way they're not just left cluttering up your home folder, whereas this doesn't have it. Now, I'll post this on my Google Drive account and have it linked in the description, but basically what I'm going to do here is I've put the script in the root of my home folder. However, if you've put it into some other folder like downloads, you'll have to CD into that folder like this. However, again, since this is in the root of my home folder, I don't need to worry about that. So I can CD back to my home folder like that. And then I just have to do sh SWTPM setup, which is what I've called the script, then hit enter, punch in my password, and then basically just let it run. Now, I've actually already got this installed, so this will go faster for me. However, I would expect this to take about 20 minutes. Yes, it really takes that long because it's actually got to basically build SWTPM and a dependency that it relies on called libtpms from source and then package these in order to prepare to get them actually installed. So this this will take a good while to run. But anyways, I'll speed this up. Alright, and that didn't end up taking as long as I expected, mostly because I've actually already got SWTPM installed. I just ran this script for demonstration purposes. But anyway, we can close out of our terminal, and as you can see, there is no residue from the installation process in sight. But don't worry, SWTPM is still there. But anyway, now what we have to do is, if you haven't already, you've got to download a Windows 11 ISO, which you can get from this page on Microsoft's official website, which I'll have linked in the description. Now, there are three options for getting Windows 11. Don't concern yourself with the first two options. These are specific to Windows PCs. You want the third option, which is to get an ISO. So basically, we're going to select Windows 11 ISO, click Download, and then it'll prompt us to select our language and then click confirm and then it'll give us our download link which then I have to do is just go ahead click it and then download it now I've already downloaded this file I've got it right in my ISOs directory so now all we have to do is go to virtual machine manager click new VM we're gonna create it from a local install media browse for our ISO file open that up click forward and this should be fine for a Windows 11 install like this is pretty much the bare minimum RAM and CPU you can have with Windows 11. And now only thing you gotta watch out for, for disk capacity, you've gotta have at least 64 gigabytes. Now this is measuring in Gibby bytes, so it'll be a little bit bigger than 64 gigabytes, but you know what, 64, okay? It doesn't really hurt to have 
a little bit extra. And besides, when Windows says gigabytes, it actually means Gibby bytes anyway. So we're gonna click forward. And now, since this is on an LTS release of Ubuntu, this does lag behind when it comes to software versions, just to keep things stable and ensure that a Ubuntu release and its software doesn't change significantly throughout its life. Now, of course, there are exceptions for things like web browsers, which need to be kept constantly up to date for security reasons. But anyway, this is gonna be treating this like a Windows 10 ISO, which is why the default capacity is only 40 Gibby bytes. But anyway, now we just have to customize the configuration before install, then click finish. I imagine on a newer version of Virtual Machine Manager, actually built with Windows 11 in mind, it'll actually be easier, but we shall see. But anyway, we're just gonna go down to firmware and then change this to one of the UEFI entries. I don't think it really matters which one, I just go with bottom. Having a secure boot enabled is not a hard requirement, but it's recommended by Microsoft. Like the actual hard requirement is that you have to have a UEFI BIOS. Another hard requirement is that we have to go ahead and add a TPM, even if it's just an emulated TPM, which is why you installed SWTPM prior to this. Then all I have to do is click apply and then begin the installation. And then we'll go create our virtual machine and then open it up. And we can close out of this window. Basically all the action is gonna be happening here. And then we have to press enter to boot from the Windows 11 ISO. Now, if you didn't install SWTPM, it would stop you right about now when the VM tries to boot up and then just give you a cryptic error message, meaning that it can initialize the emulated TPM because it doesn't have the dependency for that. But anyway, all we've got to do now is just click next and install now. And if you didn't add an emulated TPM and switch to a UEFI BIOS, then the Windows 11 installer would stop you right about now and just tell you that your PC can't run Windows 11. And of course, it's not going to tell you why because Microsoft. But anyway, this is where you punch in your product key or alternatively, if you don't have a product key, just like I don't have a product key. Now, in order to evade the required Microsoft account creation, and by the way, no, you can't just bypass that by disconnecting your VM from the internet since Windows 11 Home requires an internet connection, I would suggest using Windows 11 Pro, which has an option that's kind of hidden that will allow you to avoid creating a Microsoft account. And of course, it's going to try its best to make you sign up for one, but you can skip that with Pro. Unfortunately, that's not the case with Home. But anyway, just click Next, and then accept the software license terms. In our case, upgrade won't work because we don't have a Windows installation on this VM. Because remember, this is a fresh VM. So we've got to do custom and then create a new partition and then click apply and then OK, which will automatically fill up the whole drive space. And then we just have to leave our primary partition selected, which will be the biggest one, and then click next. And then it'll go ahead and install Windows 11. And then after that, we'll be greeted with the setup screen. So now this will take a while, so I'll speed this up. All right, and then once Windows 11 is installed, we've just got to go set it up, and I will do that quickly. All right, and if you want to skip creating a Microsoft account, all you have to do is on the screen where it asks you to sign into a Microsoft account. And by the way, this is assuming you clicked set up for personal use, which is what I clicked. You're just gonna scroll down and click sign in options and then offline account. And then you have to click skip for now here. And then you just set up a local account as normal. Pardon me while I do that. And one pro tip for skipping creating security questions, if you want to, well, I'd strongly recommend that you set up a password. Don't set it up in the setup process, set it up later in settings. But anyway, let me go through the rest of the setup. All right, now we finally got Windows 11 installed. Now, you can just go on your merry way using this like a Windows 11 PC. However, I'm going to show you a quick optional step you can do to improve stability as well as get you more screen real estate. And that is to head over to this GitHub page, which I have linked in the description, and get the KVM guest drivers for Windows. So basically, once you're on this page, you're going to scroll down to Downloads and get the stable vert IOWIN ISO. Don't be tempted to just go with the EXE file since that's the latest and that could have some bugs. Just go with the stable ISO.
All right, so now you're gonna go open the file and just click open, just ignore that message. This is coming from a trusted source. And I can see that there has been some updates to Windows 11 since I last reviewed it, probably superficial changes. But I mean, we're gonna go with the 64-bit installer since if you have Windows 11, you will have a 64-bit system. But I mean, we're gonna click next, accept the terms of the license agreement, next, next, install. And if user account control prompts us, we're gonna click yes, and we can close out of our file manager at this point and our web browser and then this will go install the KVM guest drivers for Windows. So now this will take a while so I'll speed this up. All right now once this pops up we're gonna click install. It'll be a driver from Red Hat. All right now we just have to click finish. Sorry I made a mistake back there. All I've got to do is go to the vert io win guest tools then agree to the license terms there then click yes, and then this will go install the driver. There we go. So now again, this will take a while, so I'll speed this up. And I actually didn't speed up very much at all because that's actually how long it took. So anyway, now I know that the driver is installed because our display just scaled up. However, I'm sure you want to make it scale up to the max. So let's go to settings, display, and then adjust the display resolution to our native screen resolution, which is 1366 by 768 and keep the changes. And there you go. So now you have a fully functional Windows 11 VM on KVM. And that's how to install Windows 11 in KVM. So thanks for watching. If you liked this video, found it was helpful, hit the like button, share this video with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment.